All right, welcome back to another viewer submission video. I've been meaning to film this for quite a while now, so finally had a chance to do it. We have 11 submissions today. We're gonna go through each one of those, and everybody gave me a little bit of info about their enclosures and whatnot, which is awesome, so we'll read through that as well. If you're unfamiliar with this, this is where the listeners and the viewers just send me in the projects that they've done at home so we can learn from each other and brainstorm with each other. There's just some incredible ideas in here that we're gonna steal, or at least I'm probably gonna steal. I'm sure you'll wanna steal at some point as well. If you wanna participate in one of these videos or you have an enclosure that you're really proud of that you want to show off, send it to me. I'm realizing now really email is the best way to do it. So you can do hello at animals at home.ca, hello at animals at home.ca. You can also DM me on Instagram or Facebook, but I do find sometimes those pictures get compressed to the point where it's a little tough to see what's going on. So email is the preferred method. I'm learning that now. So if you do want to participate, you can email me that at any time. And on the third part, I will include your enclosure. And again, this is not a roast or anything. This is just us looking at the enclosures and sort of sharing what each other's work, what we've been up to. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dylan and this is Animals at Home. Welcome. Thank you for dropping by. If you are looking for more information on how you can progress your animal or your reptile husbandry, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future podcasts or videos. All right, let's look at some amazing pictures. And just like last time, unless otherwise noted, I've kept everything anonymous. I don't have any names or anything unless the person actually told me to give the Instagram or Facebook or whatnot. So our first picture is a cabinet that's been converted into a panther chameleon enclosure. Nice big potted plants in there. You can see the chameleon in the top right corner there up here. And here's a shot with the doors closed. And I know some people say that China cabinets aren't the best for converting into reptile enclosures, but I've actually done it and it was a really fun project. And I think as long as you seal everything off well, you can do it. If you don't seal things off very well, then the wood can swell and it can be a problem. But as far as this one's concerned, it looks like there's some sort of back paneling there that does is a little bit moisture resistant. This enclosure does have mercury vapor as well as uh, another heat lamp and a mist king system. So I'm sure they have worked out a good, whale to, or a good way to seal it to make sure there's no water damage that happens. And then here's another shot as well. Lots of climbing opportunities. You can see the mist king nozzle up at the top. So that is awesome. All right, so here's a really neat enclosure from an Australian keeper for a pygmy python or Antaresia perthensis, if I'm saying that correct, I think I am. So I'm just gonna read what the keeper sent me here. So all of this rock work is actually all DIY. It's just foam covered with grout and painted. And wow, that looks really amazing. And the substrate has two layers. So it has this arid kind of dry sandy layer. And then underneath that is he calls a more organic layer. So I'm assuming that's gonna be more of like an organic soil type thing that probably holds a little bit more humidity and moisture, which is a really great way at regulating moisture, especially if the animal starts to dig and burrow into that sand. And uh, so that's really awesome. There is a cleanup crew of isopods and springtails, which tend to hang out in the humid uh, the humid corner or the moist corner which makes perfect sense most species of springtail and isopods prefer a higher humid environment let me just toggle through these pictures that's a really great shot there of the python and that fake rock work is really really amazing so he has a species of Australian grass growing up here in the middle, and it looks like it's thriving. He also has an Arcadia T5 Pro kit as well as the LED kit as well, and that hence the, you know, the bright light that we're seeing there, and that's probably why the plants are thriving so well. There's another great shot, some really nice driftwood. I love that like dried out kind of driftwood look. And then for light, uh, for heating, there's the deep heat projector here, which is pointing down onto this slate rock structure, which is perfect. Again, we've talked about that before, how, how great it is to have something to absorb all that heat in the enclosure and slate and rock really does hold heat very well. So that's going to create a nice warm hide for the animal. So that is awesome. There's some leaf litter down here. Very, very cool enclosure, especially because a lot of this is DIY. That's very impressive. All right, so our next enclosure is for what looks like to me a Florida king snake, a nice little king snake there. Uh, there he is poking out of this soil. You can see his face just sticking out. Okay, so here's what this enclosure looks like, and we're going to kind of pedal through a few pictures of the building process as well. So this is a four-foot-long enclosure. I think it is 16 inches high and, and 18 inches wide. I might have those last two dimensions mixed up, but it's definitely four feet wide. Look how thick the substrate is. There's lots of substrate for the animal to dig through, lots of cork grounds for them to hide in, and a few live plants as well. There's a great shot of the snake hiding underneath his rock hide which is, this is basically exactly what you would expect to see in the wild here. The, the snake hiding up underneath a rock crevice. That's really cool. And all of this is a DIY background. This is expanding foam covered with silicone and play sand and eco earth and looks very, very natural. 
Okay, so here's a great shot of the sort of the middle of the building process. So we have this background that's already been fixed in place. Again, that's that spray foam with play sand and eco earth. And the actual wood structures are molded and fixed right into place into the background with a few different pots. This is a great way to add live plants to your enclosures, by the way, by just having live pots or, or plant pots directly into the background makes it very simple to, you know, protects them a little bit from the snake from uprooting them. So for lighting, this keeper has an LED light that spans the entire length of the enclosure, then also a shade dweller here, the Arcadia shade dweller, which is the 7% UVB bulb, and a 50 watt halogen, which is pointing directly down onto this basking spot, which is perfect. You have a nice little warm hide for the animal to go into, and you can also sort of cryptically bask if he wants to throw a coil out by that front door where you can get UV and the near infrared wavelengths. So that is perfect. There's another good full shot of the enclosure. You can see the snake over here on the right side underneath the UV and the halogen bulb. And it just blends in perfectly to that background. This keeper did such a great job of, you know, having a background and decor that really matches the snake well. So we'll just finish off this enclosure with a few great pictures of the snake actually climbing, which is really cool to see. Using the features that the keeper put in there, there's another little hide that the keeper has made. The snake is obviously using there we go again, climbing up the, the back wall. And here the snake is hiding again under its artificial light, or not hiding, really just basking out in the open, which is really cool to see. And then finally, a really cool shot of the snake cryptically basking, or at least what I would call cryptic basking. Um, this, this probably is part of the enclosure that doesn't have UV or the infrared. This is just under the visible light, which we're now starting to realize that snakes and reptiles will bask under very strong, intense, visible light. We don't really understand why. So this snake is choosing to do that, which is really cool. Okay, so this is a really cool enclosure, and it, it really, I want to read the message that I got from this keeper. So th this is what the message says. Hey, so I saw your first video on setup, so that'd be the first video, the viewer submission video, and it inspired me. So first, he's talking about he was listening to the podcast and realizing that I was talking about or some of the guest was probably talking about how important UV is for reptiles. And while he was listening to this podcast, he was actually setting up a tub for the animal. Now, unfortunately, I actually don't know what species of reptile he's keeping. It's a snake. I just don't remember what species and it probably says in the messages but it's actually irrelevant for this part of the story so he's setting up the tub for this enclosure and then he realizes as he's listening to the podcast that it's inadequate so instead he goes out and picks up an exoterra actually i think it was a christmas gift an exoterra tank which is this one so way more space way more climbing opportunity as well as a deeper substrate for the animal to burrow in so now the snake has four hides and plenty of uh, the plants to hide in as well as substrate to burrow in which is just amazing and then it also says and of course what i'm most excited for is the uv light i got him and he also sent me a picture of the original tub he was setting up before he found the podcast or watched the setup video and here it is and you know this is not a terrible tub setup but the thing that impacted him the most was the fact that there wasn't enough light in this enclosure in this tub and that was the main thing he changed plus the additional space that the exoterra gave him so that's really cool i love stories like that you know somebody who listens to the podcast actually takes the information and makes a change for the better for their animals so that's amazing and here's just another angle of the same enclosure so maybe one day he can mess around with adding some live plants, depending on the species of snake he has in there. Some uh, snakes are pretty rough on plants, but there's always a way to do it. And then there's another shot. Lots of hiding spots. Again, climbing opportunities. Very well done. Like he says, this is a great start, and I totally agree. Okay, so here's another great little progression story. So here we have a keeper. This is a Dumeroboa enclosure, and this is the state of the enclosure when he first set it up and before maybe listening to the podcast or reading Arcadia books, what we're going to get into in a second. And actually, it even says, it's obvious now why the snake didn't eat for five months for me. It's a very barren setup, and I totally agree. Sometimes, you know, when snakes are stressed, they're not going to eat. So this is the original setup, and as he progressed, so there's a great shot of the Dumeroboa, which is just a amazing looking species of snake. And there he is again, and there's a better shot of the enclosure. And you can see already up here, there's lighting and stuff. We're going to talk about that in a second, but there's another great shot of the snake. So he started by adding a thicker substrate to allow, and a looser substrate to allow the boa to actually dig in. And you can see up here, Doomer boas are amazing at camouflage. The snake is actually using that to hide and, and bury themselves in. And they are such cryptically patterned snakes that they can hide in, in, in anything that's sort of ground litter and leaf litter and whatnot. So that's a perfect example of that. Okay, so here we go. This is the state of the enclosure now, which obviously everybody would agree is a massive improvement from that first picture I showed you. And uh, so there's also an Arcadia shade dweller up there as well. I'm just going to read a little bit what he sent me. So the real turning point for him was when he started reading the Arcadia books, which I can't recommend enough. We talk about them all the time. They're just behind my head on that Brazilian rainbow 
boa enclosure and listening to the podcast as well as the youtube videos such as mine but i'm sure he's influenced by others as well and he started adding adding live plants and sort of venturing down that naturalistic enriching care which is amazing you can see that happening right now so he says he picked himself up a thermostat that allowed for a night drop which is another great form of enrichment where you start messing with temperature cycles to better replicate what they have in the wild but then here's a really cool thing that he did that i wanted to share with you guys a few days before he was feeding, he would actually sprinkle in some rodent bedding into the enclosure. So this would be just a form of enrichment for the animal. During her nighttime routine, she would start acting, you know, start simulating hunting behavior or forcing her to, you know, smell prey around and then start looking around. And, and as he was watching her, he, he perceived it as hunting behavior. And I'm sure it actually was, or at least she was probably exploring this, this new scent. And in this case, he was using his sister's hamster bedding. And he likes to note here that no hamsters were harmed, which is good. But that is a really cool idea to actually, you know, it's just a, another form of sensory enrichment for the animals, sprinkling something into their enclosure to, and they will go investigate it at night without a doubt, especially if they think it has something to do with prey. So that's a really cool idea. So future plans right now, it does have UV, but he will be adding a deep heat projector as well as a longer UVB T5, which I'm sure he'll get from Arcadia as well. And of course, he says he has plans to have a larger enclosure, but for now, I think this is pretty good. And one thing I love, if you have a Doomerals bowl, you just have to do this. You have to have a crazy amount of leaf litter because that is really, somebody shared a picture on Facebook a few months ago of a wild Doomerals boa on the forest floor and it was just covered in leaf litter and you could barely, barely make it out. So you want to use that cryptic pattern to your advantage and, and you know, throw some leaf litter in there and amazing job. Very, very cool. There's some more of the live plants. And there's the boa sticking her head out of a cork round. And here's the same keeper's crested gecko enclosure. So obviously fully bioactive. There's a bunch of live plants at the bottom. And at the top here, we have the Arcadia Shade Dweller as well as the Jungle Dawn. That's the small Jungle Dawn, I believe. That's the same one I have on my Jungle Carpet Python enclosure. And there's a deep heat projector as well and a Mist King system. So that is awesome. All right, so this next set of pictures and video is from a keeper named Joshua Miranda. He is on Facebook, so I'll put his Facebook link below so you can look at it more if you'd like. And uh, he sent me a few videos of a reticulated python enclosure that he's done. And we're going to swipe these curtains out of the way so you can see. And it's just almost like it's set into the wall. And then there's a window, just a conventional window that he's using as a door, which is really cool. So there's the bottoms, lots of sort of natural substrate plants. Are those live plants? I think those are live plants. They sure look like they're live plants. They might not be. And here's a hide at the bottom. He has got a hole, and that's actually uh, this whole false bottom actually lifts up. He's going to show us in a second here. Actually, no, those are fake plants, they, but they look real. So that whole thing lifts up, so that's a whole spot for the snake to hide down. There is a really cool water feature right here. Let me scroll back there for a second. Okay, so here's a shot of the water feature here. That, that is pretty cool. Let me get my mouse out of the way. So there's a little funnel or a, a fountain there with a little waterfall running down, and there's a big water feature, and obviously the snake is enjoying that. And there's also at the top, you can see where the tail end of the snake is, there's a couple of shelves so the snake can actually tuck up into there. And Josh also said that his eventual plan is to actually inset the lighting into the top of the enclosure so the snake can't climb on it or anything. So that's the future plans for this enclosure, but this looks like a ton of space and what a really cool water feature. And then also it's kind of nice that it, there's a, it's a window to just open and close. So that's pretty uh, creative. And then here is a photo of it if you're standing in front of the enclosure. So the only thing that he said, so a couple things. One, he said he was going to inset the lighting into the ceiling and then also add a few more climbing branches, which I, which I think would look awesome if you had a couple big climbing branches going across or even a few vertical ones. As we know, reticulated pythons love to climb, so that would really polish off this enclosure. But I think this is great. It's inset into the wall. It kind of tucks away, and then you have that window that just opens and closes. So very, very creative and a great enclosure, especially this water feature. I mean, Look at that wood structure. That is very cool. So awesome job. All right. So for the next keeper, and unfortunately, these were Instagram photos that were sent to me and they are very, very small and they were compressed. So maybe I can overlay some Instagram photos. This is from an Instagram account called Tiny Geckos and I'll put that in the description so you go check their account out and maybe I'll also just overlay some shots on top of what I'm looking at right now. So this is for a Viper Gecko and I definitely go recommend following their account. This is really cool kind of fake rock work here. Lots of slate down at the bottom. Nice hot spot with some slate that's absorbing that infrared heat. Definitely encourage you to go check out their Instagram. There's a couple more pictures here.
This is for a species of day gecko. I forget exactly which ones, but really nice. Lots of bamboo. Uh, we talked about this last time. Day geckos love bamboo. There's some nice live plants in there as well. And I think this is a very smaller, one of the smaller species of day geckos. So lots of you know enrichment and places for them to hide and climb around. And day geckos are incredibly fast quick moving kind of nervous geckos so you want to really give them lots of space and crevices to hide in and, and places to dart around in so great job here this is a little bit of a bigger photo so we can kind of see what's going on and we do have one more and this is a crested gecko enclosure and there's tons of plants in there some hides at the top nice i think is, is that a bromeliad it's hard to tell from this photo lots of climbing uh, vines and whatnot but really lush and, and full plant work in the middle as well so definitely go check them out this is tiny geckos again links are in the description and and hopefully i'm overlaying a little bit of better quality photos from their instagram account as well okay now this is i know a listener of the podcast because i've communicated with him before while he was doing this project and he just did an incredible job so let me read to you what he sent so this was a three-month project Obviously very tough, but very rewarding project. It is a bioactive with maple branches and DIY vines. That's what these guys are here. He's using two 75-watt halogen bulbs alongside two 80-watt deep heat projectors and an, uh, a radiant heat panel to maintain nighttime ambient temperatures. There is a 6% Arcadia UVB fixture as well as a Jungle Dawn LED bar for the plants and you can see the plants are doing well and this is just just starting to mature so the plants have a lot of growing to do but with that LED bar the plants will do very very well and the entire thing is controlled with a herp stat 4 and he has two computer fans as well that that run for 30 minutes three times every 24 hours which I think is a great idea to keep the air fresh that's one of the areas that I think we're going to start moving towards more in the reptile hobby is keeping the air fresh instead of locking up all the vents to maintain humidity as keepers, we need to figure out a way to maintain humidity while keeping the air fresh. So having computer fans is a great way to do that. And there's a Miss King system as well, which obviously is going to help him maintain humidity. So the really cool thing about this is he spent three months doing it, and now he's going to let it grow in for a few months. So his, it's, it's a boa that he's going to be putting in here. And hopefully by the end of February, he's introduced her into this enclosure. But amazing job. I believe all the rock work in the back is all done by himself as well. And that is just a stunning piece for the room. So let me see. There's another shot here. So, I mean, wow. I I forget if he did all of the work himself, including the wood. He's going to have to let me know. Maybe he can jump into the comments there. But either way, it's an amazing job. But if he did all that woodwork as well, that is phenomenal. But really, really nice. You can see it's actually like a piece of furniture, a zoo sort of exhibit in your living room or wherever he plans on putting that. That's pretty cool. And he sent me a video as well. Oh yeah, and there's a pond, a sort of a water feature down at the bottom. Look at all the the surface area he has on this rock wall. Like the snake is going to use this without question. There's tons of areas for them to perch and stop and climb. And that's how you use a fish space efficiently. I did that video a few weeks ago or a month ago or so about, you know, providing larger enclosures for our snakes. And, you know, one of the feedbacks, pieces of feedback I got was like, well, you can't, just having a large enclosure doesn't help you. You got to utilize the space properly. And yes, that's absolutely true. You want to utilize the space. So having empty air doesn't do anything for you. But this enclosure really utilizes the space well. There's a nice you know, substrate, very you know, uh, bioactive, lots of leaf litter, and uh, I'm not sure if there's a cleaning crew up, uh, in there as well. A nice little palm as well. I like the lichen that's growing on these, these maple branches. But anyway, getting back to using the space efficiently, you can see here that there is no wasted space. The snake is going to be able to use a ridiculous amount of this, the, the volume of this enclosure, which is amazing. And look at that. Well, that's a great that's a great shot up there. You can see all the inner workings of this thing. You have the fans up here, all the the electronics and the lighting and really really cool. Okay, so this is a really fantastic enclosure. Now, I don't I wish I could pronounce the I don't want to mess it up, but there's this individual has a YouTube channel. I'm going to put it on the screen right now. Go check out their YouTube channel as well. I feel like if I try to pronounce that I'm just going to mess it up. But she recently put out a video out where she was showing her progression within this enclosure. So this is a leopard gecko enclosure, by the way. And in that video, she shows how she started in this very simplistic setup and over time, how it's slowly evolved, including asking for a solar meter for Christmas, which has got to be one of the coolest Christmas gifts for someone to ask for. So, and this is sort of the final product where it is now. And this is just, 
it looks amazing. Like this does to me look like a section of nature, rocky outcropping with, you know, these sort of dead dying bushes. You can imagine it'd be very hot here in the summer. There's lots of areas for the animals to get out of the hot, the, the heat and dig underneath into, you know, deep into the crevices. There's a humid hide in the back as well. That's what this sort of a gray rock structure is in the back and all this nice kind of dead grass. And, and then there's some live plants as well. There's a weeping ficus right there. And uh, just, yeah, this is an, an amazing enclosure. She's using a Reptisun 5.0 UVB bulb and a 75 watt or a 100 watt exoterra day, daytime heat bulb for heat. So that, that's awesome. Of course, that's going to give you your infrared and there's lots of rocks there to absorb that. All right, so here's a picture of the leopard gecko itself hanging out there basking on the rocks. And here is an overhead shot of the enclosure. Really nice job. Great job using the rocks to absorb that heat like we've already talked about. And I just love the way dead plants look in enclosures like this. They just fit it perfectly. And there we go. There's a full shot of the enclosure. Very nice job. And like I said, go check out her video because you can see the progression that she's made over time. And it is just amazing. All right, so this set of pictures is from Gary over at Meridian Reptiles. You can find him on Facebook as well. I'll post, of course, post that in the description. So this is a rat snake enclosure. Great use of live plants, lots of leaf litter. I also like this kind of barnwood style wood exterior that he has going on here. Branches look amazing. Lots of different climbing branches. Looks very natural. And there's some really cool things here. There's another shot of it, another angle. And I he didn't send me this picture, but I pilfered it off of his off of his Facebook. This is a shot obviously in sunrise or sunset mode and I do this with most of my enclosures in here as well. That's where you kill the UV and the visible light and just leave a halogen on maybe for either the first half hour or the last half hour of the day and it gives that sunrise effect and I think it just looks amazing. Just dark, lots of shadow, there's some warm light in there and quite often the animals will even act as if it is dawn or dusk because you know they have some of that programming in them as well so that is really cool. So here's another one of his amazing enclosures. Now this one is going to be for dart frogs. I think he's letting it mature. I'm not sure how long he's had it set up, but it's about 68 inches long by two feet by two feet. So it's a pretty large enclosure, especially for dart frogs. And it has this DIY kind of root buttress running through the middle of it, which looks so cool. And I, he sent me some pictures of how he did it. And I'll look at those in a second. There's lots of moss here as well. But th this root buttress is actually what I wanted to do for my Brazilian rainbow boa enclosure because in the wild I can just imagine them using these sort of dark cavern areas that are created by roots as hinds and I just didn't even think about how I could do it so it just that idea kind of came and went really fast but now it's something that I might try now that I've seen someone like Gary do it so let me show you Okay, so here's how we did the root buttress. So here is just some styrofoam that he's cut out and sort of shaped roughly how he wants it. And then there is spray foam on top and that will allow him to carve it into the shape that he's looking for. So you can see there that's already taking shape pretty much exactly what you would imagine a root buttress to look like. And then it's just coated in grout. And then finally he just painted it and then sealed it with a polyurethane. So that is really cool. And that, that might be something that I try in the future. I think that it just, I mean, it looks so amazing. We'll go back to the original shot there and it just fits perfectly in that enclosure so really really cool now this is a really neat enclosure again this is another enclosure that will eventually house a some a, sort of a community of dart frogs but i think he's still letting the enclosure mature so in this one there's some malaysian driftwood and then just a bunch of various different species of moss which are growing up it almost looks like it's underwater in a lot of ways that's pretty cool and then an led light to make sure the plants and the moss are thriving which they clearly are so just quickly go through Gary's last three enclosures that he sent me because they're all amazing, especially this rockwork. This rockwork looks real. That is all DIY, so it's really amazing. This is a four-foot-long leopard gecko enclosure. Really nice substrate, lots of places for the animals to hide and dig. So here's a really neat enclosure that he has set up for a small species of chameleon. And he's actually been cycling this enclosure for up to a year, I think almost a year, over a year, at, without any animals in it. So it all has fake rock work. There's a whole bunch of live plants. There's an LED light powering everything right now. Of course, when chameleons get added, more light will be added as well. But again, that's the patience of this keeper, allowing the enclosure to set up and establish itself before messing it up by adding animals. Quite often when you add animals into a mix, it can kind of, you know, shift the balance to one side and then it becomes more work so letting the plants establish is a really good idea and that will look amazing once animals are in it 
And the last enclosure that Gary sent me is this one here. I'm going to put the species on the screen so I don't screw it up so bad. But this is the species that he's going to be keeping in here eventually. I don't think he has it. Oh, no, I think I think they already are in here as well. So, again, the fake rock work looks amazing. Lots of live plants, bioactive substrate, LED lights, and UV and halogen as well. You can see the halogen glowing there and the UV in the front. So I love the way those vines are growing up that rock. But, I mean, this is... Really, really incredible fake rock work. Let me see if I can zoom in to see if... Look at the detail on that. That looks like a rock. So again, Meridian Reptiles, you can go follow his Facebook page there and you can learn about how he sets these up and how he does that rock work because it is phenomenal. All right, and last but not least are the pictures that I received from my friend Danielle, who's someone that I've been communicating with for probably over a year now. She's someone that's relatively new to the reptile trade or the reptile hobby, but you won't be able to tell by the pictures that we're looking at here because she just does an amazing job at setting up enclosures. And so we went back and forth for a while and she asked lots of questions and then she just went and did this, which is, you know, an incredible setup. So she has, I think, three animals in total, two ball pythons and a leopard gecko. And, you know, I'm going to read something that she commented on one of my videos before and I think this is a really important point to make. So initially she was enamored with and fascinated with all the ball python morphs but eventually got her teeth sunk into the bioactive world and then just kind of hit the ground running. So she took that focus that you know that sort of a little bit of of an obsession with morphs and transferred it into this and you're going to see here how amazing she's done in terms of setting up these enclosures and how much better this is for the animals to you know focus on two or three animals at once rather than focusing on how many different morphs you can breed look at the enclosures here so this the all the both ball python enclosures are five by two by two i think they're animal plastic yeah they are animal plastics cages and they all have led jungle dons they have a pro uh, Arca Ar Arcadia Pro T5, as well as two Ar Arcadia deep heat projectors and a halogen. So you're pretty much getting the full spectrum of light as best we can right now. She's providing all of that for her animals. But I mean, look at the way these enclosures are set up. I'm just going to toggle through these photos. She sent me a lot, but I'm going to give you her Instagram as well. I was trying to convince her to post some pictures on Instagram. She hasn't really posted any, but I know everybody's going to want to see more of what she's done here. So I'm just going to toggle through these and let's just enjoy the work that she's done. Lots of climbing, lots of digging enrichment. There's all different textures and substances for the snake to mess around with and investigate. Uh, I love these back panels that really adds lots of depth. It almost makes it seem like you're looking right into the forest. And this is the second enclosure, the second ball python enclosure. Again, I think there was the last pictures we were looking at was sort of a mix of both. But that's the... And here's the, the gargoyle gecko, which we'll get to in a second because she sent me those enclosures as well. Uh, here's a few more photos. ball pythons climbing lots of i mean again if you give them opportunity to climb they're going to use it lots of different hides for them to poke their heads in and out of and she actually sent me a few more photos of their of, of the snake so I'll, I'll go to those and these are small snakes these are still small ball pythons and they have five by two by two and they're eating for her she's doing some training with them based off of what Lori's been showing her off of her videos and these animals are thriving they have full access to light full access to enrichment and I mean, a testament to not needing to be kept in a tub to thrive. There's a couple more pictures of the snakes. I mean, we all want to see pictures of the snakes. So there's a really neat hide that Danielle did. I know she posted this somewhere on Facebook where she, you know, talked, showed how she dug this section of the dirt out and gave a little hide. What a great idea. We know ball pythons do like to burrow and, you know, be in tight spaces. That's not false. So you want to provide that for them in any enclosure. And uh, she's done a great job of that. There's another picture of it climbing. More pictures of them climbing. All right, and here's the picture of the gargoyle gecko enclosure. So this is the Exoterra 3 feet by 18 by 18. So lots of space there. And I already know that Danielle has plans for a much larger enclosure as well. She's huge. Let's just put it that way. So that maybe she can include that in a photo in the future when she's finished that project. But again, lots of live plants, tons of enrichment. I just like the, the way... Her enclosures look, they all kind of have a similar theme, like a thematic feel to them, and I think it just looks awesome. So lots of branches for this animal to climb in, and what other information do we have? This animal also has a Jungle Dawn as well as Arcadia Compact UV lights as well as a halogen bulb too. So again, 
pretty much the full spectrum of light there. That is awesome. And here's a great photo of this animal. Like really nice and red, looks incredibly healthy. Visible light, intensity of light is going to help with the coloration of the animals. We know that for sure as well as UV. So, I mean, it's no surprise that the animal looks as healthy as it does. And then here's just some shots of the foliage and the branch work that she's set up. I mean, not much to say about this other than it just looks amazing. All right, I think we have gone through every single photo. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I always enjoy looking at these. Uh, there's just some amazing work here and hopefully you got some ideas of things that you can implement into enclosures that you wanna build in the future. If you want more information on the photos for anybody that gave me information about themselves, that is in the description below. And if you wanna participate in one of these in the future, just email me photos and a little description of what you're sending me to animals or hello at animals at home dot ca that's not dot com dot ca and then i will include that in the next time we do one of these installments i think that's it for today guys thank you very much for watching the video and i'll catch you in the next podcast or the next video see you later